So we looked and looked for good videos on putting supports in your dog's ears. It doesn't look like he needs it now, but we're going to do it anyway. Max is nine months old, and Righty sometimes still flops, so we thought we'd use this opportunity to go ahead and show you how we put in earphones. We're using, um, well, I'll talk about that later. Um, generally speaking, you want to start putting in a good solid line to put them in is five months. If you wait too long, you can miss your window for helping the ears stand. Um, they should be up. Usually they're up between three and four months. Usually after the, the done teething, sometimes it'll come, the ears will come up. And then when the teething starts, they go back down. And then when teething ends, they come back up. That didn't really happen for us. Um, they kind of always flop down. So we thought we'd go ahead and try at five months. Um, I saw a bunch of videos on um, people using mole skins uh, and nasal strips for the rigidity. Um, we tried that, did not work. Um, the reason is because the mole skin, even with the um, nasal strips, it's still too soft. And the biggest reason is that when we took our dog out, uh, even in a little light drizzle, they worked like sponges and they made his ears already more heavy. So don't use mole skins, didn't work. Um, supplements, generally speaking, very bad idea to use. Like we use the, the pills, not a good idea. If you want to do cottage cheese or yogurt type stuff, I'm not a big believer in it, but we do it. Our breeders suggested we do it, so we do, we do it. We give a, a, a heaping spoonful, tablespoonful of cottage cheese with every meal. Um, I don't think that's, I don't know if that works or not, but we do it. Um, generally speaking, I think hiking through tall brush is a bad idea while these forms are in the ears. I could just see brush getting stuck between the ear and the foam, and I just thought that might not be a good idea. Um, also, swimming and bathing, probably hold off on that too, just because I was thinking that this could be a good environment for bacteria and fungus to develop. So d keep them dry, keep them clean, general rule. Um, so let's go into the materials. Um, you're gonna need scissors. These are the foams. These are the foam supports. We found these online. You can Google them. Uh, these are made by Redline. Um, they have little holes in them for, to breathe. I don't know why the glue covers them up, but they're there. Um, the reason you need the scissors is because when you put them in the ear, you might need to shape them to shape to your dog's ear. Um, generally speaking, you can see the way that they're shaped. You can kind of see which ear goes where. I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> so, um, but you can place them and you'll see. Uh, we also used this osteobond. Osteo um, this is actually human grade. It has a brush included, which you'll see. Um, a lot of people recommend a tear mender. Uh, that is not made for uh, people. It's made for, uh, you know, paper and crafts type stuff. Apparently it's a good, good glue. A lot of people use it on this. So if you want to use it, you can. The reason I liked this is because it is made for humans. Uh, it is a medical grade. It's used to, to stick on medical equipment onto the body. So I like that. Um, also, uh, Smith & Nephew glue remover. This is awesome. It comes in, uh, the, what, the way we got it is a box. Um, comes in little wipes. So this stuff is great for cleaning. Um, again, this is human grade. It's used for the exact same stuff the glue is. Just remove the glue off of skin. So, good stuff. We've had good luck with it. Uh, all the stuff we all, all got on Amazon, except for the uh, Redline uh, earphones, we found, we Googled those. There's a, a dog sport site. I forget the name of it. But if you just Google Redline earphone, earforms, you'll find them. Not a problem. Um, also a good idea to have some wipes on hand or paper towels. Either one is fine. It doesn't have to be fancy, um, but both will work. Uh, you need to have a timer on hand. I'm using my phone. And last but not least, certainly not least, bully sticks. <laughs> These are awesome for many different reasons. All right. So uh, 
before you put the foams in, you want to make sure, I would say the day before, make sure that your dog's ears are clean. Um, the reason I say day before is because once again, just make sure they're dry. I just, I like to use, make sure they're all dry. Um, you also want to be able to do a, a dry run. So get your foam, shape it however you need it by just shoving it in his ear <laughs> and having a look, see, see how it fits. We already shaped these, so we're not going to go through that. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and set your timer. So I'm going to do that right now. You want to set your timer for, I actually just do a timer, and but you can set your timer for two minutes. Uh, that's how long you're going to need. So what I do is I set my timer and I just put it on the floor where I'm going to need it. Um, you can have a paper towel handy if you want, if you just don't want to get glue on stuff. If you do get gl the glue on your skin, it just wipes off really easy, just like peeling off the Elmer's glue when you were a little kid and you loved that. I know. I did too. Um, okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, it's a good idea to take your dog on a walk before you do this too. It might make him a little less squirmy. No guarantees. So I'm going to get this stuff I'm going to put on the floor and I'm going to show you how we sit. Um, we're going to do, in this case, we're going to do Mr.'s right ear. So I'm going to sit on the floor with the right ear up. He's going to be on his side. His right ear is going to be up and you'll see what I do. This just seemed to work really well for us. And that way you don't have to have help. You do this by yourself. So here's what we do. I get on the floor. I put Mr. Man. Come here, buddy. Sit. Good boy. Down. Good boy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit over him like this. Okay. This makes things a lot easier. The reason is because if he is going to squirm, you got him right here. And the other good thing, the other good thing is that all of your wet glue type stuff is out of the way of him because he's going to be curious and he's gonna be squirmy and you don't want him to get glue everywhere so let's do a dry run here's your foam what you want to do hey buddy is you want to kind of pull the ear a little bit so that it, you got a nice clean area to work with nice flat you want to get all these little tufts of hair kind of get them away and the crease, I'm kind of pushing it with my thumb, is right here. So you want your foam Did I get the wrong one? Is this one? Yeah. You get you want to put your foam right underneath like that. Can you see how it's not on this, it's on the other side of this little, this little uh, ear shape. And also you don't want it to inter interfere with this one. But you want this guy to be down very low. Do you see how low that is? And you want to make sure that the hair is kind of away. Okay. So, um, just real quick, I'm going to show you a little bit of fast forward. When you, when you need to use these, you need to clean. You need to clean the glue off. I painted this on earlier, realized, thinking that we were going to do that earlier. The glue. Don't use the uh, glue remover on the foam. It just makes things uh, sticky and yucky. So what you can do is just get a dry paper towel, and you can just rub it. It takes a while. It's kind of a pain, but see how it just comes right off. So you can just rub this right off. I usually have this ready. I just screwed up and got painted the wrong side. 
Um, so you want to have this ready before you actually stick these on, but this is how you clean off the old glue when you want to reuse these foams, and you can reuse them. So once you kind of get the glue off, the dry glue from the previous application, see it just comes off like that. It's you just, and I find that it's a little easier to do with a paper towel. You can do it with your finger too, but it's a lot easier with a paper towel. And you can just little hairs and stuff. You can just, they're not sticky anymore. You can just tuck them. So, all right. Now we are going to go ahead and shake the glue. First thing you want to do is paint the foam. Here's a nice little brush. Get that, make sure you put that away from doggy. So now when we paint this on, it looks really thick, right? So I'm gonna make sure I get it on every little part. Try not to get it on the outside edges. I mean the edge, just on the flat part. That's a whole lot of glue on there. I'm gonna clean a lot of that off because you don't want it to be too thick. Oops. It's like string. Cheese. Okay, so that's pretty good. See how it's not too thin? It's not too thick, but it's not too thin either. So it's okay if you let this, you can just put this aside somewhere, preferably not on carpet. And you can just let that sit for a second. It's actually not a bad idea to let it get tacky. You don't have to wait like a full minute or two like some people said. I never did that. You can do it if you want. <clears throat> then we're going to take some glue. And we're going to get Mr.'s ears. This is cold, so it's a little surprising. So get, make sure every time you put the glue down, put it away from squirmy. Okay, now we're going to take his ear. Like I said, spread it out. Make sure you're not getting any hairs in there. And you want to put it all the way down here and all the way up. I don't put it on the edges like some other people said to do because I didn't want to get too much of his fur involved. Just put it on the skin. And once that is painted on, put your lid on tight. You're done with the glue now. I got a little bit on my finger. I'm just gonna leave it there. And you can see, you can just wipe it right off. Just like plastic, it's great. Okay. So now, okay, I'm gonna wipe it off. I lied. Okay, so now I'm gonna take Mr.'s ear and I'm going to kind of pull it up like this. And again, see, hair is kind of in the way. So I'm gonna kind of pull it up, flatten it out a little and I'm gonna sorta place it. I did a dry run and I've done this so many times, I kinda know just to sh shove it in there really quick. The more you muck with, don't try not to muck with it. The more you do, the more aggravated your pup is gonna get. So um, good idea to do several dry runs so you know exactly how it fits and where it goes. If you screw up though, it's not the end of the world. So kinda stick it where as low as you want it to go at the bottom like that. Make sure it's lined up good there at the bottom, not interfering with anyone. And then all the way up here. See these don't line up perfectly with the tip? That's okay. And they tend to um, fold, they tend to curl like that. So hold it down on the edges like, like this. And then I take all my fingers, make, them, make sure it's all flat so it's all on the edges. And I push back on the back of the ear like this. And now I'm gonna start my timer. Start. and we're gonna wait two minutes. And while we're doing this, we're just gonna firmly push on the foam and look how good Mr.'s being. And sometimes I kinda give him a little, just pet his ear a little. But just make sure you're firmly holding all the way to the edges because I notice that when they start to come undone, 
they curl a little bit uh, and that part can lose stickiness. Um, so try to flatten it at good for two minutes. So because this is a video and we don't want to wait for a full two minutes, we're going to say, ding, timer up. Oh, it's been two minutes. Okay. So the glue is stuck. <laughs> um, and now it's going to itch a little bit <clears throat> because just as the glue is drying, see, look, look, it just, it just peels off. There, see, it just peels off. So um, now that the glue is drying, it's a little bit itchy at first. Um, so what we do is we distract him by giving him a bully stick, which he loves, which is also a good way to strengthen these muscles up here so that the ears will stand up. Um, so here's a little training tip for you. When I'm done, when I take my legs off of him, it's, he's not done. He's not done until I say he's done. So stay there, buddy. It, that didn't work. So, now he gets a bully stick, which is awesome. My dad? Yes, he does. So when he's done playing with the, the when he's done eating the bully stick, um, the glue should be set and you're good to go. Um, these will stay in 24-7. They'll um, stay in about seven to ten days, and then they'll just fall out on their own. Um, when they fall out, you can just look, um, look at the ear, see if it's flopping. Um, sometimes after, like, sometimes the, immediately when they fall out, they flop a little bit. If they come up, it's going to be like an hour or so. Um, if they don't come up in that time, you need to put it right back in. Um, so, you hey buddy, don't step on my phone. So, come here, Max. Sit. He wants his bully stick. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, it's very important that when you put these foams back in, the foam is clean and the ear is clean. Um, so, what you want to do is you want to get those wipes um, that I showed you. He's, I don't know if I'm going to do this because he's enjoying his bully stick. That's kind of mean. Get the wipes and um, let's see if we can see a little bit of glue in this ear. Yep. Hey, buddy. So, in this ear, you can see there's still a little bit of glue. We haven't been messing with it too much because they have been standing up, so we don't want to upset it too much. But what you do is you just take one of these wipes and you just I do the same trick where I sit on him, but you just take the wipe. See, can you see the glue? There's a little bit of white glue there. You just take the wipe and you, you hold, you support the ear like we did when we put the foam in. He's not, he's, yeah, see, he's being like this. And you just kind of, let's say his ear is in my hand. <laughs> you just hold the ear and you just kind of wipe up with the fur. And you, sometimes you have to scrub a teeny bit, um, not just kind of gently, and you just wipe up um, till, the, uh, till most of the glue is off. Um, after, after that, after that, then these wipes that I showed you before, you can use these wipes, or like I said, you can use just a wet paper towel with a tiny dab of Dawn, just a little tiny bit of Dawn, and you can, and then you want to clear out the clean out the glue the glue remover um, because if you think about it, you can't put glue in on top of glue remover. Um, so you want to make sure that's all done, it's all cleaned out uh, and dry, and then you want to put that ear foam back in. Um, I would say see make sure the ear is um, not is still flopping. So I I would wait. A, so I waited a day, but I found out that you didn't need, you, you weren't supposed to wait a day because if you wait too long, you're kind of defeating the purpose. Um, for us, a day worked. Uh, we had to do this for a solid four months. Uh, it took kind of a long time. He was a late ear bloomer, um, but we just stuck with it. And as you could see earlier, 
his ear is up, um, and now he's got a little extra support in the right ear. Um, so I think that's it. I think hopefully that'll help. Um, like I said, these, these red line foams were awesome. They're reusable, they're cleanable, they're just, they're just perfect. You don't have to use the pipe insula insulation stuff. You don't have to use ear tape. You can see how it's pretty low profile. You can't really, it doesn't, doesn't just stand out that the ears are in there, that the foams are in there, and uh, they forget about them. And once the initial itching is done, they totally forget about them. They sleep with them, totally forget they're there until they fall out. So good luck. This is very doable. And don't listen to people who think you're cruel or who are haters because you want your German Shepherd ears to stand up. You still love your dog. You just want the ears up. So anyway, thank you. Good luck.